inheritance. Okay, so for today's video, we're starting exactly where we left off from the previous video for very good reason. In the previous video, we saw how we can call functions on existing deployed smart contracts on the blockchain. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can play around with inheritance instead, making these functionalities a part of your actual smart contract. So we are simply going to change what we've done in the previous video to show you how you can use this functionality as well. Firstly, let's go ahead and clean up what we have done in the previous video. I'm going to clear the console down here, give us some more space, remove the global pizza contracts that we have deployed as well. We are, however, going to keep the global pizza uh, cost contract separate from the pizza place. But it doesn't really matter because we are importing it. And it's just the same as I would have pasted all this code in the same file. But for now, we are going to leave it as it is. Our purpose here is to allow our pizza place to have all the functionality that the global uh, pizza cost contract has. So how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. Firstly, we have this function down here, which we'll need to uh, kind of change. So uh, we're going to get to that just now. But the first step is to actually inherent this global pizza cost. And we're going to do that by just adding it to the list here right after our pizza place interface. Now, think of it like this. You could technically say that pizza place is derived from the pizza, uh, pizza place interface. It needs to have these functions as well as the global pizza cost contract. Or you can think of it as the pizza place being the child and these are our parents which uh, the child came from, all right? So that is how you can think of it as well. Now that we have this, something magical will happen. Our pizza place will actually have all the functionality of the global pizza cost, meaning that we have direct access to the get cost method. So essentially, we can get rid of this and we can simply just call get cost because it's a part of our contract. And I can prove that by simply going ahead and deploying the pizza place. If we open this up, we can see that get cost is a part of this contract. Even though it's not in this file, we are inheriting from it and it does exist on this contract. And there is the price. Now, one thing with inheritance that we need to understand is that if we have a constructor in this function, which we don't have currently, so let's go ahead and add it. And I'm going to add the constructor for a good reason. Let's say our cost was never defined from the beginning. And for a constructor, we pass in a uint, and this will be our new cost. And here, we would then simply say that the cost is equal to the new cost. Now, if we have this like so, how do we make sure whenever we deploy this contract that we set that cost on the global pizza cost contract? Now we can see we have an error and it says that we actually need um, that kind of variable, right? So this is how it works. In our current constructor in the pizza place, what we'll do is simply create a space and pass it in like so. We will say that this is our global pizza cost right after our constructor. And in here, we are now simply going to pass in a value. And I'm going to ma make the value maybe over here instead of way 0.1 ether, like so. And this will now go ahead and find this inheriting contract and set the constructor's value through our constructor here at the top. And you can simply add the parents depending on which contracts need uh, what constructor arguments. Now, to make it easy for us later on when we test with real uh, ether or test ether, maybe we want to make it a very, very cheap pizza. Um, so I'm going to make it 0.001 uh, ether. Okay, 
So now just to test that everything is still working, I'm going to deploy my PETA contract. We can now go ahead and verify that the cost is a lot less. We need that to kind of uh, buy our PETA. So we're gonna in input that amount and then I'm gonna place my order and everything works fine. If I place the order without specifying anything or maybe just put 10 way, which is really not enough, it will fail. So our contract is currently working perfectly fine. And this is it. This is how inheritance work. Now, inheriting from contracts, you can inherit from multiple uh, contracts, the functionality, but there's a lot more involved with that. So uh, this is a bit more advanced. But for now, at least you know why inheritance is there and how to use it.